New tonight, one man is sharing his pain more than two decades after he told the Catholic Church he was fondled by a priest. His story is just one of several we've uncovered as part of an investigation into how local Catholic leaders handle decades of reports of sexual abuse. Investigative reporter Nick Oxner has obtained hundreds of pages of documents that show church leaders knew of allegations four decades before at least two priests were removed from ministry. Nick. Yeah, Molly, Paul, records show the senior leaders in the Charlotte Diocese were told of alleged sexual abuse by priests time and again and did nothing. We came across a letter written by one man in 1998 in hopes of alerting the diocese to a priest he says abused him years earlier. His letter didn't prompt any public action, but he's speaking with us now in hopes it helps change a problem he says is rampant in the church. I had gone to a priest that I hadn't recognized before for confession. John Moore says he's been waiting to share the story of what happened to him one night at St. Mary's Catholic Church in Wilmington for 25 years. He um, reached his hand between my leg and um, just rubbed me and it, um, and I was just in shock. Moore says he made his confession and left as quick as he could. I got up and I thought, what in the hell just happened to me? The priest who heard his confession was Father Al Gondek. At the time, he passed at a church in the Raleigh Diocese, which is who Moore says he reported the incident to soon after it happened in 1993. Did anyone in the church at the time that it happened take this seriously? No. It was um, 25 years it's taken for somebody to finally acknowledge that it happened. So you were abused by Al Gondek? Yes. Do you think you were the only person? Absolutely not. Do you think that others could have done something sooner to stop this? Oh, it should have happened when I asked the bishop of the Raleigh Diocese to have Al Gondek removed and sent back to his religious order. In 93? In 93. Moore says the Raleigh Diocese gave him six months of counseling, but otherwise took no action, which is why he wrote this letter in 1998 to the Charlotte Diocese, where Gondek was being transferred to serve as a priest at a church in Lexington. Moore, who was 30 when he says he was assaulted by Gondek, said he was riding the diocese in hopes of keeping others safe. Quote, I pray that you will not let Father Gondek place his hands on another young man, he wrote. But there's no record of anything ever happening, not in Raleigh, nor in Charlotte. That allegation about Father Gondek was made in the Diocese of Raleigh. David Haynes is a spokesman for the Charlotte Diocese. The Diocese of Raleigh had conducted an, inv an investigation, as did the Oblates and they all determined that the allegations were not credible. But that's not what a spokesman for the Oblates, the religious order Gondek belongs to, said. In an email, the spokesman said Gondek underwent an evaluation and received counseling following Moore's report. The spokesman didn't explain why Gondek was allowed to return to ministry, nor could Haynes, the spokesman for the Charlotte Diocese, explain what Monsignor Mauricio West, the diocese's second-ranking official, did once he learned of the allegations. This letter shows West received Moore's complaint, requested information from Gondek's order, and talked with the priest. But that's it. I was hoping that Bishop Curlin would um, believe me and remove Al Gondek from the church in Lexington and send him back to um, Wilmington, Delaware. Did you get any kind of response from that letter? Yes, I received a response that said that None of this was any of my business. Haynes downplayed what happened to Moore because he was an adult at the time he says he was abused. The, the sexual abuse policy deals with children. So what happens when an adult alleges sexual abuse? Um, that's a personnel matter. That's not, that's not a crime. Sexual not, abuse I, is not a crime. Is that what you're saying? Um, no. But WBTV found other documents showing Gondek has been accused of abusing children, too. This report, taken in 2007 by a former student at a Catholic school in Philadelphia, accuses Gondek of giving students alcohol. This fact sheet shows the religious order Gondek belongs to forwarded the information to its lawyer, who was scheduled to have a call with the priest. But there's no public record that anything was ever done. Again, Haynes says that report was investigated, but couldn't provide any evidence. So we're just supposed to take your word for it? Well. Here you are, a guy who comes on really strong and is very aggressive and really is kind of a pain in the neck. So, you know, you're not, you're not trying to work with me. You're trying to accuse me of something. You're kind of being a bully. So maybe I don't feel like cooperating with you because you're a bully. 
Gondick was removed from ministry in 2015 for allegations the church says involved sexual abuse of children, said to have happened five years before that. For John Moore's part, he says he's back in the Catholic Church after years away. Mm -hmm. But those years haven't healed the hurt and anger he still feels from the way he says he's been treated. We as parishioners have been um, betrayed by the church greatly. Um, they've taken advantage of innocent people. Um, the sacraments are supposed to be the safest place in the whole world. We're receiving Christ and um, for them to um, treat us that way, to take advantage of us with their power um, is a sacrilege. Now, Gondek isn't the only Charlotte priest we found the church didn't act on warnings about. Coming up tonight at WBTV in primetime, I'll tell you about a second priest who ended up convicted of a crime only after decades of inaction by the diocese. Guys, back to you. All right, Nick, thanks so much. All new tonight on primetime, internal church documents reveal steps to move a priest out of Charlotte after being accused of sexually abusing a young boy. At six, we spoke with a man who says Catholic leaders in the Raleigh and Charlotte diocese ignored his claims that a priest sexually assaulted him. Now we've uncovered evidence local church leaders took steps to move another problem priest. Our investigative reporter Nick Oxner joining us live with more of what he's uncovered. Nick. Yeah, Brigitte, documents show leaders of the Charlotte Diocese knew Father Richard Farwell had a problem with sexual behavior as far back as 1985 when he was sent away to receive therapy and came back years later. Documents show he was sent away a second time in 1999 after allegations he'd sexually abused a young boy. This is St. Dorothy's Catholic Church in Lincolnton. There was a lot going on at the church in early 2000. A new building, a new home for the priests, and according to this letter from the church's pastor, pain and healing left in the wake of the departure of Father Rick Farwell. Documents show Farwell left the year before, accused of molesting a young boy years earlier. He'd been sent by the Charlotte Diocese to a monastery in Florida. And after a year, the bishop in Charlotte wrote this letter to the archbishop in Miami, highlighting Farwell's good reputation for priestly ministry. Back in 1999, we were dealing with a different set of rules. David Haynes is a spokesman for the Charlotte Diocese. He says Farwell was allowed to leave town because, at the time, the diocese didn't have a policy of reporting all allegations of sexual abuse to law enforcement. But he couldn't explain this letter from Monsignor Mauricio West, the second highest ranking official in the Charlotte Diocese, to Farwell in September 2000, reminding the priest, quote, the diocese assisted him in resolving problematic situations during his pastorate at St. Dorothy, addressing allegations of sexual misconduct. Monsignor West is telling Father Farwell, hey, we helped you out. What, what is one supposed to make of that letter? Well, I, I don't understand what you've made of it, and I don't understand what anybody else is supposed to make of it either, to be honest. Haynes couldn't explain what Monsignor West meant in his letter, but defended him nonetheless. Father Mo has always followed the policy of the diocese, which has changed a couple of times over the years, but he has always followed the policy both in the spirit and the letter of what the policy says we're supposed to do in these incidences. In the 10 years you've been working on cases like these, what has been the overall tone and tenor from the diocese every time you bring new allegations? War. Attorney Seth Langson has represented victims who claim to have been abused by priests for a decade. The Charlotte Diocese is one of the least transparent in the country. He says the documents gathered from the court file in Farwell's case showing the diocese moved him and continued to vouch for him despite allegations of sexual abuse don't surprise him. They've been very protective of priests who've been accused, both welcoming and protective. You have anything to say about the charges? Farwell was charged with sexual abuse after the victim from the 1999 report came forward a second time in 2002. He pleaded no contest to a lesser charge in 2004. For his part, Haynes, the diocese spokesman, didn't seem to think our questions were worth answering. <laughs> You're cracking me up, man. This is really some funny stuff. This is like, this is like, like Mike Wallace or something. This is, this is, this is a hoot. Now, if you have a story to share about sexual abuse being covered up, we want to hear from you. Call our tip line at 704-374-3511 or email investigations at WBTV.com. Brigitte, back to you. A man who says he was abused by not one, but two Catholic priests is breaking his silence for the first time.
You know, I was put in a, in a position with somebody of power and trust, and I feel like that that was violated. That interview comes just days after the Catholic Church held a summit on sexual abuse at the Vatican. The summit ended with no new steps announced to combat clergy abuse across the globe. WBTV's chief investigative reporter Nick Oxner explains one step both survivors and professional counselors say the local church could take now to help combat the problem. So far, the Charlotte Diocese hasn't released a list of all priests credibly accused of abusing children, but it could. And the man I spoke with, who was abused as a child in the 1990s, said he's speaking now and hopes his words would push the church to publicly identify abusive priests. I feel like my, my childhood was robbed. I feel like um, this has taken decades away from what I could have potentially offered society. Douglas Dickerson says he was 13 when he first tried to jump off the roof of St. Elizabeth's of the Hill Country Catholic Church in Boone. It's got to be traumatic that something happened to you so bad that you wanted to take your own life. Yeah, at 13, it, it was the only way out that I could figure um, because the, I wasn't comprehending or understanding the situation that was happening to me at that time. I, I wasn't capable of understanding that. You know, Imagine. I was put in a, in a position with somebody of power and trust, and I feel like that that was violated. Dickerson says he was first abused by Father Cornell Bradley. A priest. Did you expect your parish priest to do that to you? No, absolutely not. But new records released by a Catholic order of priests in Maryland this past December shows someone could have known. This document shows Bradley faced multiple allegations of sexual abuse in Maryland and Washington, D.C. in the 1970s and 80s before he came to North Carolina. It feels like um, St. Elizabeth, well, more so the Charlotte Diocese, um, did have a role in being able to prevent something, something like this and they didn't do their part. It's unclear whether the Charlotte Diocese knew of Bradley's previous allegations when he came to North Carolina. A spokesman for the Charlotte Diocese refused our request for an on-camera interview and called our report gotcha journalism. But in January, that same diocesan spokesman told a newspaper in Boone there were no allegations of abuse against Bradley when he worked in the diocese. The diocese has said that they don't think Father Bradley had any victims at St. Elizabeth. The diocese is wrong. Dickerson says he was abused by a second priest, too, Father Damian Lynch. Dickerson says Lynch fondled him on multiple occasions, once on a youth group trip to Carowinds and also at the priest's residence. This isn't the first time Lynch has been accused of sexually abusing young boys. A family filed a lawsuit against the church and Lynch himself regarding allegations of abuse in the late 90s. The lawsuit was settled out of court. In a sworn deposition in that case, then Bishop of Charlotte William Curlin said Lynch was sent away for counseling but returned after doctors determined he wasn't a pedophile. I think that there are some dioceses that are accepting responsibility, um, accepting their accountability. The Charlotte Diocese is not one of them. They have not made the kind of substantive changes um, that protect children or deal with the priests and why it happens in the first place. Mary Gail Frawley O'Day is a counselor who works with victims of abuse. She's even spoken to Catholic bishops in the U.S. about how best to handle abuse cases by priests. It's a big deal. Sexual abuse is a big deal. We've seen some dioceses across the country release mm -hmm. lists of known abusers. Mm -hmm. Is that a helpful step in your opinion? I think it is very helpful. It's validating to the victims. But the Charlotte Diocese hasn't released a comprehensive list of known abusers. Dickerson says he'd like to see that change, but doesn't think it will. Um, I, I think that, you know, putting people, as I, as I mentioned earlier, you know, people in positions of power and trust, um, they feel as if they're above the law. They feel like they can sweep things under the rug. If you've been the victim of abuse at the hands of a Catholic priest or any other religious leader, we want to hear from you. Call our tip line at 704-374-3511 or email investigates at WBTV.com. Coming up on WBTV News in primetime at 7 o'clock, hear from a man who spent years fighting for justice after he says he was abused at the hands of a volunteer youth pastor at a major Protestant church here in Charlotte. Guys, back to you.
A WBTV investigation continues to unearth more evidence showing the Catholic Church knew about abusive priests in the Charlotte Diocese and continued to let them work. Our investigation started last year and last week. The second in command of the diocese stepped down after a review board deemed allegations of sexual misconduct lodged against him to be credible. Now, Chief Investigative Reporter Nick Oxner has uncovered new information showing the Charlotte Diocese allowed a priest to keep serving in ministry decades after he was first accused of abuse. Nick joins us now. Nick. Yeah, Maureen, Alex, Father Andre Corbin was credibly abused, accused uh, clergy from the Catholic Diocese in Springfield, Massachusetts. He was sent to the Northeast after Catholic leaders in North Carolina found they had difficulty with him. But he still remained a priest of the Diocese of Charlotte. You'd never know that, though, because Catholic leaders in Charlotte still haven't released a list of credibly accused clergy from this diocese. This is a letter from the Bishop of Raleigh to the Bishop of Springfield, Massachusetts, sent in the 1960s, before the Charlotte Diocese was created. The letter is about a young priest who the bishop said needed psychiatric treatment. His problem, the bishop said, boyology. The bishop in North Carolina was asking the bishop in Massachusetts to give a little help to the young priest and let him work in a parish. And these other records show Corbin stayed in Massachusetts for decades. This letter from the Springfield Diocese in 1986 shows Corbin was living in the area on leave from the Charlotte Diocese, working as a priest on weekends and teaching at a school. Two years later, Corbin was charged with two counts of indecent liberties with a child for an incident that court records show happened in Asheville in 1966. He was convicted a year later on one count of indecent liberties with a minor and spent two months in jail. The public should be questioning, in general, the diocese's handling of all the other allegations of sexual abuse. Seth Langson is a Charlotte lawyer who's worked with survivors to report priest abuse. He's among those who've called for the Charlotte Diocese to release a full list of priests found to have been credibly accused of abuse, like this one, released by the Springfield Diocese. That includes Corbin. But Corbin's name isn't on any official paperwork the public could use to link him to the Diocese of Charlotte, though, even though he was convicted of abuse here. When the diocese has refused to release the names, that has antagonized so many survivors, especially when the diocese says, well, we don't know if it's best for the survivors to release the names. Survivors all around say that's nonsense. Now, I just received a statement from a spokesman for the Charlotte Diocese a little more than a half hour ago. It says in full quote, Father Andre Corbin's reprehensible behavior led to his dismissal from the ministry by the Diocese of Charlotte in 1988 and a con criminal conviction in 1989. It's important to note that this episode represents a different period in the Catholic Church's handling of these types of allegations. Adopted in 2002, the Charter for the Protection of Children and Young People provides for evaluation by a lay review board of all alleged sexual abuse of minors by clergy and immediate consequences for any allegation deemed credible. We regret the pain and suffering of all victims of abuse and we're committed to a culture of transparency and accountability to restore faith and trust in our institution and our people. Guys, this is just the latest revelation in our ongoing investigation that will definitely continue. Mm. Nick, thank you. Thank you, Nick.